Hey what's up guys, welcome to a complete and updated Kazuha guide for his rerun in patch 2.8. In this video we're going to be covering everything you need to know about Kazuha regarding how to play and build him efficiently. We're going to be covering his best artifacts, weapons, teams, constellations, playstyles, and so much more. We're also going into a breakdown of the frequently asked questions that I get, notably regarding how you should build him, focusing on either elemental mastery or crit, and talk about which one's better and why. As you may know, Kazuha is one of the strongest supports or sub DPSs in the game, one of the best units, and one of the most anticipated reruns, so I really want to give you guys as much information as possible in this video. Now before we begin I do want you guys to know that I do stream most nights on Twitch, link in the description if you're interested, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Alright so starting things off, let's talk about Kazuo's abilities and playstyle to explain how this character works and how to get the most value out of him. The first thing you need to know is that his role as an Anemo support or sub DPS is to buff your entire team through one of his passives and his artifact set that we'll talk about while also grouping up enemies very efficiently and dealing really good damage. And the way this works is honestly pretty straightforward. First of all, to group enemies, you're going to be using your powerful elemental skill, which is an ability that can be pressed or held. What this ability does is basically group enemies around your Kazuha, pull enemies towards him, and then he gets lifted into the air where he can plunge back down and that plunge attack will be converted to a Nemo damage. A few other things to note about this ability is that if you choose to press it, the AoE will be smaller than if you hold it and it will deal less damage, but it will also have a lower cooldown. Because of that, you can choose to press this ability when you're just going to maximize your damage, use your Kazuha and then swap out of him to go back to your DPS, whereas you can hold it if you mainly want to group up more enemies, want to have a larger AoE, or don't mind the 9 second cooldown. This ability is really nice because it groups enemies very efficiently and the plunge attack that you do after, unlike plunging with certain other characters, won't typically knock the enemies back as your skill does like suck them towards you, so it does make it a very efficient grouping ability. Something else you need to know is that through one of your passive talents, if your skill comes into contact with Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro, then the plunge attack following your skill will deal additional elemental damage. Moving on, Kazuo also has an amazing elemental burst that is really central to his kit and that you do want to maximize. This ability with an amazing name is a very powerful burst where your Kazuo will do a first initial slash into leaving behind this sort of whirlwind on the ground that does good damage over time as well as swirling enemies and also having the property of infusing with an element that it comes into contact with. Because of that you can do things like place Bennett's field which infuses your own character with pyro then swap to Kazuo use your burst and it will be a pyro field. This ability is absolutely insane for many reasons. First of all it lasts for 8 seconds with a 15 second cooldown so it has a pretty good uptime while also having insane scalings and as I said constantly swirling the enemies within it. If that wasn't enough you will also also be constantly buffing your team with this amazing character through your passive talent that you unlock after ascending your character past level 60. What this passive talent does is that every time your Kazuha swirls, you'll give all your party members elemental damage bonus based on what you swirled. So if you swirled Electro, you'll give them Electro damage bonus based on how much elemental master you have, and this will last for 8 seconds. Through this passive talent, you can double swirl, you can swirl Electro and Hydro, Pyro and Hydro, whatever, and buff all the elements you swirl simultaneously as they can coexist. Now while 0.04% elemental damage bonus for every point of elemental mastery may not seem like that much, it kind of is and it does add up, especially when you consider how much elemental mastery your Kazuo has. For example, if you have around 700 and you can obviously get more, then this will add up to 28% elemental damage bonus to any element or every element that you swirl. When you pair this with the Verdes and Venera set, which we'll talk about in the next section, Kazuo becomes an insanely powerful support to buffing your team while also grouping enemies and having good damage himself. Now where things can get a bit complicated is when you start looking into how to optimize your Kazuo's build, because as you can see, the buff your team and their elemental damage does scale on your Kazuo's elemental mastery, whereas the scaling on his very powerful abilities comes with obviously attack and crit. Because of that, a lot of people fall into the trap of stacking attack on Kazuo to maximize his personal damage. The reason why this is usually not optimal and not what I recommend is because your Kazuo will not only buff your team better with elemental mastery, but will also usually deal more damage himself from stacking EM. The reason for this and why your Kazuo and your team will be better off when you do stack elemental mastery over attack and crit is because of the way Swirl works. Swirl is a very powerful transformative reaction that was buffed in patch 1.6 to just deal really good amounts of damage, especially if you're swirling multiple enemies at the same time. The way swirl works is you can swirl each enemy twice, you can double swirl enemies as long as you are swirling more than one together. Because of that, when you fight large hordes of enemies, or at least just two enemies, your Kazuo's swirl damage will be doubled, and since your Kazuo swirls an insane amount, especially through his burst, stacking elemental mastery will give you a ton of damage. Now to clarify what I said, stacking elemental mastery on Kazuo, while it will basically always be higher team DPS, the only times it'll be worse for your Kazuo himself is if you're fighting a single target enemy where you're not going to be double swirling it because it's just one enemy or if you are like really high investment and having external buffs to your Kazuo's attack to where your Kazuo's personal damage might be slightly higher like literally just a bit higher overall but it is not nearly enough to justify the loss of elemental damage bonus that you're gaining to your team which is usually going to be comprised of DPS characters whereas Kazuo is more so a you know sub DPS or a burst support and so because of that I basically always recommend stacking elemental mastery on your Kazuo instead of going crit 
accurate as it will be more efficient overall for your team's DPS. Lastly, before moving on, a few important things to note are that number one, you should level your Kazuo to 90 as his damage from his swirling does scale on your level and also it does help with displacing enemies. And lastly, for your talent priority, you do want to make sure you're leveling your burst first as it's very important and then your normal attack and your skill are pretty similar in strength. All three of your talents are very important, by the way, you should level them all. And the reason why you're leveling your normal attacks, in case you're not sure, is because the plunge attack damage from your elemental skill when you use it and then plunge down is something that scales with your normal attacks level. Because of that, you should maximize your burst first and then your normal attack and your skill are pretty even. All right, now with that said, let's talk about what artifacts you want on your Kazuo. First of all, for the set you're looking for, it is very straightforward. The four piece of the Verdes Inventor is obviously going to be your go-to. The Verdes Inventor is just a broken artifact set. I'm sure you know it by now because it is a set that will basically just buff your entire team while also increasing your Kazuo's damage. In fact, you'll gain a ton of personal damage by gaining 60% damage to your swirls, which is going to be one of your main damage sources as Kazuo is someone who swirls a lot while also gaining 15% anemo damage bonus. And while that is nice, the main reason you're using the set is actually for the second part, which will greatly amplify your team's damage, or at least the elemental DPS of whatever you swirl by decreasing the elemental resistance of the swirled element by 40% for 10 seconds. Now with that said, there are some niche alternatives like using the two-piece wanders for EM or the four-piece thundering fury in specific teams, but in general, four of Adesant Venner is just universally the best for Kazuo, especially if you're running an elemental DPS that is either Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro. Now with that said, what stats do you actually want on your Kazuo? Well, as we saw earlier, Kazuo is someone who benefits greatly from having elemental mastery. With that said, because his scalings are so high, going for crit rate, crit damage, and attack are still also beneficial to have on your substats as he has good scalings. With that said though, the main things you're going to focus on for Kazuo are two things. First of all, energy recharge, making sure you have enough to spam your burst on cooldown as that is very important. And number two, stacking as much elemental mastery as you can to deal the most damage and buff your team by as much as possible. To go into a bit more details though, first of all, for energy recharge, the exact amount you need highly, highly varies on, you know, what team you're running and how much energy you're generating for your Kazuo. A good staple number is around 160 energy recharge, but as I said, this does highly vary. It could be a lot more or a lot less. Another really big factor to this is Favonius weapons on basically any party member, but also especially on your Kazuo, as the Favonius sword, which we'll talk about in the very next section, is a really good option for Kazuo that gives you energy recharge, but also will decrease how much ER you need because of its passive effect that gives you those white particles. To keep things simple though, and not make it too complicated, basically test out how much energy recharge you personally need in your team and with how you're playing, but generally around 160 energy recharge is a good starting point. Other than that, going for elemental mastery on your stats is going to be recommendable. Because of that, you can look for EM on your substats and for your specific main stats. First of all, for your sands, you can either go for elemental mastery or energy recharge if you need more energy recharge. For your goblet, you want to go for elemental mastery and for your circlet as well. While anemo damage bonus and crit are viable, they are not as good as elemental mastery for the reasons I mentioned earlier, so I highly recommend stacking EM. Do keep in mind, if you're running a Favonius sword, you do need enough crit rate to be able to proc the passive reliably. And while some people would go for a crit rate circlet, I would personally recommend trying to get enough crit rate on your substats because with EM main stats, you can't get EM on the substat. That's just how main stats and substats work in this game. So I would highly recommend trying to farm for elemental masterpieces that have substats like crit rate if you're running Favonius or energy recharge in general, or also the offensive substats like crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent. And so because of that, while there are many different ways you can build your Kazuo, this is going to be the optimal way where you're making sure you have enough energy recharge then stacking elemental mastery and also having some good offensive substats, especially focusing on crit rate if you choose to go for a Favonius sword, which we'll talk about in the next section. In fact, I do believe now is a good time to actually talk about Kazuo's weapons and explain why I've been mentioning Favonius sword so much. While Kazuo's best in slot weapon is still going to be the Freedom Sworn, generally speaking, as it's a sword that's just made for him, giving you almost 200 elemental mastery, increasing your own damage, and also buffing your team's damage by more specifically increasing their normal charge and plunge attack damage by 16%, as well as their attack by 20% when your Kazuo triggers elemental reactions. So it is very easy to proc and very easy to buff your team. With that said though, apart from this specific weapon, he does have quite a few other good options with the best one, honestly, typically being the Favonius sword. The reason for this and the reason why Favonius has been underrated for so long is because it gives you so much energy to not only your Kazuo, but also your whole team that it makes it a very efficient supportive weapon. Since Kazuo is someone who really needs energy recharge and elemental mastery, the Favonius sword is a weapon that helps you fulfill that energy requirement while also letting you build elemental mastery on your artifacts and going for more offensive substats. In fact, the Favonius sword is a weapon that gives you over 60% energy recharge at level 90, which can oftentimes just be enough in and of itself, while also having an effect that when you crit, will create these white particles that you can catch on any party member that will restore some energy for your team. This is very good for lowering how much ER your Kazuo needs or other energy hungry characters that you might be running Kazuo with, since he's such a flexible support that can fit 
fit like almost any team. Because of that, the Favonia Sword's value is oftentimes going to be better than some Elemental Mastery Swords like the Iron Sting, which is still a good option and a good free to play option, but will not be as efficient overall as the Favonia Sword, assuming you can use the energy that it gives you. Obviously, if your Kazuha needs no energy recharge and has no crit rate, the Favonia Sword won't be as efficient, so you need to make sure you can use it properly. But the Favonia Sword, even at Refinement 1, is absolutely insane on Kazuha, assuming you need the energy and can proc the effect. On top of just that, though, I do believe energy recharge swords on Kazuha in general are good. The Sack Sword is also very good, allowing you to use another instance of your elemental skill. Although this weapon does get better with the refinement, as a 40% chance for it to proc at R1 is not that appealing unless you're hitting multiple enemies. With that said, though, energy recharge weapons like Sack Sword and especially Favonius are going to be my go-to recommended options. I recommend anyone that has Favonius to use it unless you have uh, a Freedom Sworn to use instead. With that said, if you don't have it or don't need the energy recharge, the Iron Sting is still a good option and a free-to-play one at that, which gives you a good amount of elemental mastery. Other weapons I want to talk about are, first of all, for another free-to-play option, is actually the Dark Iron Sword, which you only get one of from an NPC in Leeway, I believe, and I threw mine away, so it's pretty rare that people still have it, but if you do, while it isn't as good as Iron Sting, so you might be thinking, why would I use it? Well, it could help you save a prototype if you don't want to use one, especially with Sumeru being just around the corner, and probably new swords from the Blacksmith are going to come out. Other than that, for some 5-star weapons that are good, Jade Cutter and Mist Splitter and Skyward Blade can all be good. Usually, they are worse uh, for your overall team than a Favonia Sword, though, unless you're building Crit Kazuha and trying to maximize his personal DPS, but that isn't recommended, obviously, as EM will be more optimal. Because of that, these 5-star options are good and usually similar in strength to the Iron Sting, depending, obviously, on the team you're running and your substats. With Sting being your go-to free-to-play option, Favonius Sword and Sack Sword being better, with Fab being my favorite, and the Freedom Sword being his best overall, if you do choose to pull for it, but it is not a must. Next up, to talk about some more advanced tips or combos with Kazuha, while he is a pretty straightforward character, the few things that you need to know are the following. First of all, you can infuse his elemental burst with any element that he comes in contact with, which will allow your burst to constantly deal that type of elemental damage, which will obviously buff you through your passive talent, but also allow you to proc valuable reactions, such as if you were to infuse your burst with Pyro and then swap to Ganyu and melt all your charge shots. A way to abuse this and to consistently make your burst be Pyro, if that is something that you choose to do, is to run Bennett with Kazuha, as Bennett's burst applies Pyro to your character inside of the burst, and so if you use Bennett's burst and then swap to Kazuha and use his, you will infuse your own Kazuha burst with Pyro, allowing you to consistently swirl that Pyro element, which can be useful in many different teams. Something else you can do with Kazuha is actually double swirl or swirl multiple elements to buff both of those elements and greatly increase your team's DPS. An example of this is in a Child Changling team, where you can actually swirl both Hydro and Pyro quite easily by applying Hydro onto the enemy using Child, swirling it right away with your Kazuha, which will count as a Hydro swirl, while also using his burst inside of Bennett's ult, which will make it Pyro and let you swirl Pyro as well, which is just one way to manage to swirl both elements. You can also do this in Electro Charge teams, where there's going to be Hydro and Electro on the opponents, and so this is just a bonus way of dealing more damage by swirling multiple elements at once. And lastly, I do want to remind you that when using Kazuha's abilities, you just want to be thinking of what you are swirling, and make sure you're grouping enemies before doing your rotation on your other characters. For example, in a Freeze team, you want to make sure Cryo is applied on the enemies, so that you swirl that Cryo and buff your team's Cryo damage, while grouping them up before going to your other characters, where you can then freeze them and one-shot them since they'll all be grouped up together and frozen solid. Next up, to talk about Kazuha's constellations, he's a character who, in my opinion, is absolutely insane and broken at C0, so he really isn't someone who's dependent on them. With that said, he also has some pretty good ones, like notably his second constellation, which I do want to cover in this section. But to start in order, his first constellation is a decent one that decreases the cooldown of your elemental skill by 10% and resets its cooldown once you use your burst. What this means is you kind of have like the sacrificial sword effect, where you can use your skill, you can hold it, then use your burst and then use it one more time to get two casts. The only downside of this constellation is that you need more field time on your Kazuha, and so it's not like a game-breaking constellation, but it is nice for quality of life, and it can especially be nice to group certain enemies. With that said though, his second constellation is a pretty insane one that will buff your Kazuha and your team when you use your elemental burst. In fact, after using your burst, your Kazuha's elemental mastery will be increased by 200 for its duration, which is really good for your Kazuha and for buffing your team's elemental damage through his passive, but you'll also give 200 elemental mastery to characters inside of the field, which is really nice for any reaction-based team, giving a similar buff to someone like Sucrose, and greatly increasing your DPS when spamming reactions. This is therefore a really good constellation, and the one that I would recommend stopping at if you do choose to pull for constellations. For your next ones, your C3 and 5 increase your talent levels as always, your C4 gives your Kazuha some energy, while when you're lower energy, you gain more energy when using your skill, and you also regenerate energy passively when gliding. In practice, this isn't the biggest deal, and I don't really like it too much, but it can help with some energy. Lastly, your 6 constellation can help transform your Kazuha into a more like main DPS role by giving him anemic
Nemo infusion for 5 seconds after using your skill or your burst. What this means is your attacks will all be infused with a Nemo, making you deal elemental damage, and you'll also gain damage to your normal charge and plunge attacks that will be infused, obviously, based on your elemental mastery. Now, at C6, your build can change. You can go either triple EM or attack a Nemo crit, and I will link more information on the C6 build in the description below because it is a bit different, but in general, this will change your Kazuo's playstyle, and you can play him as more of a main DPS. Overall, Kazuo is someone who does not need constellations, as he is just insane without them, but his second one is a really good point to stop at if you want to pull for constellations. All right, now with all that being said, let's finally talk about what teams you should run your Kazuo in. Now, as we saw throughout the video, Kazuo is a pretty broken and extremely flexible support that can fit almost any team. The teams that mainly want Kazuo are teams that have a flex slot at the end, usually for an Nemo character to buff their damage, especially if they are someone who does elemental damage. Kazuo is good for grouping enemies and buffing your team's elemental damage when you swirl an element. The elements that you can swirl are uh, Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, and Electro. So as long as you're running elemental DPS of that type, Kazuo will be an amazing addition to your team. Because of that, Kazuo is someone who is extremely flexible. So what I'm going to do in this section is just cover a bunch of team archetypes where he is going to be the best option so you guys can find teams where you can fit him. Now, as you will see, there are a ton. Like, for example, pretty much any Shangling team that has a flex slot at the end, like Child with Shangling or Shangling with Sing Chu, you can use Kazuo as a very powerful Animo support who can swirl both Hydro and Pyro, as we saw earlier. Other teams include pretty much any hyper carry team, so a Raiden hyper carry, for example, even other electro carries like Beta or Kaching can use Kazuo, and Mono elemental teams like Mono Electro, Mono Pyro, or even Mono Cryo, if you choose to not run Freeze, can run Kazuo to buff their elemental damage and make a really powerful team. This Raiden hyper carry team, for example, has Bennett, Sara, and Kazuo greatly buffing the damage of your Raiden for her to literally just destroy everything on field. Other teams include a Ganyu reverse melt team where you can run either Shangling or Kazuo as your Pyro applier, Kazuo allowing you to swirl Cryo as well while being a bit harder to play, but you can effectively infuse his burst with Pyro and then swap your Ganyu and basically melt everything with your charge shots. Another really good team for your Kazuo is literally any freeze team with literally any freeze carry, even a four star like Kaya or Rosaria or like a quick swap freeze team can work very well with Kazuo. This is because Kazuo buffs your elemental damage bonus and decreases the elemental resistance of what you're fighting, so you're gonna gain a ton of cryo damage bonus. While many reaction teams can alternate between Kazuo or Sucrose because Sucrose gives you a ton of elemental mastery, for elemental DPS teams that don't rely on reactions for damage like Freeze, which yes, Freeze is really good, but the Freeze reaction itself doesn't deal a ton of damage, gaining elemental mastery won't do that much, whereas gaining elemental damage bonus will, so Kazuo here will obviously be a lot better than Sucrose, which is a reason why you would want to use him. To keep going on teams though, pretty much any Pyro carry is usually going to be wanting to proc a reaction like Vaporize, so you can run Kazuo with them. For example, Hutao teams, where you run double Pyro to swirl the Pyro, or double Hydro, can use Kazuo as the last slot. Against large mobs with displaceable enemies, you can also run a quick swap team with Kazuo, Venti, and Bennett. Running Venti and Kazuo, the two like strongest groupers in the game, can actually synergize pretty well with one another. Moreover, any elemental carry that I didn't mention, teams with like Ayato, paired with Fischl and an Electro Charge team, or in pretty much any other setting, can utilize Kazuo to swirl both Hydro and Electro. And so in general, basically any elemental carry can run Kazuo, and he'll usually be the best option in that team, to such an extent that pretty much when people ask me to build a team with any character, and they're like, I don't know how to build this team, you're typically going to be running them with Kazuo, as long as they are an elemental DPS. It's gotten to such an extent that when I do showcases for, I guess, less meta characters, and I run Kazuo with them, people just call it a Kazuo carry. To keep things simple though, all the teams that I mentioned are very good, and you can also slap Kazuo in a team when you just want someone to group enemies for pretty efficient displacement. So yeah, overall, as you can see, Kazuo is a very flexible and insanely powerful support, one of the strongest characters in the game, and one of the best banners or five-star characters that you can pull for, but obviously you still shouldn't feel like forced to spend money on him, because this is a gotcha game at the end of the day. With that said, he's very powerful and someone who I really enjoy. He's tons of fun to play. That's something that I kind of forgot to mention. He's just really enjoyable, especially because he aids you in grouping enemies and just has a very smooth play style. With that said, I was going to add a showcase, but Kazuo is mainly a support character, so it would be showcasing another team with Kazuo as the grouper and buffer. So I chose to not do that and include background footage of him instead. With that said, I really hope this guide was helpful. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.